I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the East End Church of Christ, located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to Saturday's edition of Walking Through the Bible a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, if you have a Bible with you, please turn to the book of Genesis and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Disselkamp for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 11th lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday, we covered Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, discussing the creation of mankind on the sixth day. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash eastendchurchofchrist under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today we're going to begin with Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 and read through verse 3. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis 2, beginning at verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Chapters and verses in the Bible were not added by the inspired writers. They were added later for the convenience of Bible study. In my opinion, verses 1 through 3 of chapter 2 belong at the end of chapter 1. But regardless, after creating everything, Genesis tells us that God stopped creating. In other words, this universe and everything in it is able to sustain itself because God made it that way. He created reproduction so he wouldn't have to continually make new animals. He created the different cycles, like the water cycle, so this earth could sustain itself. Having finished creating, Genesis tells us that God rested on the seventh day. He didn't rest because he was tired. Rather, the word translated as rest is from the Hebrew word Shabbat, meaning to stop doing something. This is where the word Sabbath comes from. When God rested, the end of chapter 1 says that his creation was very good. There was no death, no decay, and no sin to spoil it. Such would not last, but this is another passage that tells us that God is not the cause of sin, nor the reason there is suffering today. As I said, however, back in Lesson 4, I'd like to quickly deal with the issue of what the word day means in Genesis 1 and 2. Of course, most scientists believe that this universe is billions of years old, which has led some Bible believers to change their understanding of what day means in these two chapters. The conclusion they draw is that day doesn't mean a literal 24-hour day. It means spans of time or ages, which could be millions of years. Making day to mean age allows some religious people to believe in the Bible and evolution at the same time. Of course, this belief is preposterous for many reasons. First, mankind is an intelligent being. If God wanted to convey millions of years of evolution to us, he could have said so. Second, if you believe in the Genesis account, but also believe days to mean millions of years, you have plants that require pollination by insects, unable to, be, to reproduce for millions of years because plants and insects are created three days apart. Other issues just like this arise in other areas too. And lastly, you have the Sabbath day problem. The Sabbath day is a day of rest, and when it was instituted, Moses referred to creation. In Exodus 20, verse 8 and 11, we read, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Moses confirmed here that God created this universe in six literal days. This was the pattern that the Jews were to follow. They weren't to work for six ages and then rest for one age. They were to work for six literal days and rest for one literal day. Look, the Bible and science disagrees about our origin, 
And unless science on the whole accepts God's existence, it will always be this way. Trying to harmonize the two completely is thus an impossible task. The evidence we have points to the Bible as being true, so my faith rests on the Bible and on God, not on science. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow for the weekly question and answer edition as well as the weekly sermon edition of this podcast. The question this week is, does a Christian have to work? Well, the sermon will be titled, Foolishness. We will continue our study of Genesis, the Lord willing, on Monday, beginning at Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or email us at answerinthebird at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, the Lord's willing, tomorrow when we'll be presenting two episodes. One is a question and answer session, while the other is a sermon from God's Word. Goodbye for now. Have a great day. I'm not a